And with that, uh, we'll move on to House File 992, Representative Long, uh, regarding jailhouse witnesses. Uh, we will be moving, Representative Long, would you like to move House File 992 to be laid over for possible inclusion in the Judiciary Finance Omnibus Bill? Thank you, Madam Chair. That is my motion. All right. Thank you, Representative Long. The bill is before us. Uh, please go ahead and tell us about your bill. And I know as a fellow chair, you recognize uh, the time constraints we're under. So uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I will be as brief as I can. Uh, so House File 992 deals with trying to improve our uh, process for justice for individuals um, who are accused of crimes. We know that none of us want to see innocent people punished for crimes they did not commit. And this bill is about improving um, our system with regard to testimony from jailhouse informants. We know that there can be strong motivations for incarcerated persons to trade information for leniency. Sometimes this information is accurate, but there is reason to believe that it may not always be credible. This can particularly be the case when informants trade for enhanced leniency multiple times. And there have been reports in our state of incentivized witnesses testifying in multiple unrelated cases. Sometimes these uh, informants could be motivated by gang rivalries or reasons other than justice. And this bill would do two main things. It would improve the disclosure of past informant behavior to defense counsel to allow for credibility to be better determined in court. And it would create a database that would track informant behavior to better analyze trends uh, and to allow for prosecutors uh, to help determine the credibility of uh, witnesses before putting someone on the stand. There's, there, there would also be uh, anonymized data that would be uh, published annually to help, help with uh, research and, and looking for trends. There is support for this bill across the ideological spectrum, including from both Americans for Prosperity and the ACLU. Uh, and I have uh, one testifier today, Madam Chair, if I could uh, introduce her now. All right, thank you, Representative Long. Uh, I have Sarah Jones. Uh, Ms. Jones, if you could introduce yourself for the record and then go ahead with your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Long and committee members. Uh, I'm Sarah Jones. I'm the Executive Director of the Great North Innocence Project. Um, some of you may remember us as the Innocence Project of Minnesota. Um, I'm here to testify about this bill because it's a very important bill for minimizing the possibilities of wrongful convictions. Um, overall, nationwide, 7% of all exonerations of innocent people who have been wrongly convicted involve jailhouse witnesses. And in cases where DNA was the factor in exoneration, 17% of those cases involved um, jailhouse witness testimony. So the scenario I'd like to set is a, a suspect is being held in jail for a very serious crime, such as murder, robbery, kidnapping. Um, they've been uh, claiming their innocence from the start. Um, they are housed in a jail with another person uh, who, um, purport, who had no involvement in the crime, and suddenly that um, jailhouse witness says that um, the suspect confessed to them. And the jailhouse witness goes to the prosecutor and says, I've got this information that I'm willing to trade for leniency in my case. Um, it's often cases where the police have the least amount of evidence. And this sort of uh, trading for leniency happens without notification uh, to the victim of the jailhouse witnesses' crimes. Um, you all might remember Mike Hansen, one of our uh, previous clients who was exonerated. Um, Mike was convicted in part because of a jailhouse witness who claimed that he confessed to murdering his daughter. Um, in fact, Mike was exonerated later, primarily having to do with medical testimony, but um, the jailhouse witness got a, a very significant deal for his testimony. Um, and we all have been hearing about the Burrell case in the news, and we have other examples of cases where there are multiple jailhouse witnesses in a single case, um, where a jailhouse witness has, mul has testified in multiple cases in the past, receiving leniency for various crimes. Um, and um, 
We are very concerned about the impact that has on victims of jailhouse witnesses, crimes, and also for the innocent people who may be convicted as a result of um, incentivized testimony. As Representative Long said, we have um, uh, support from across a spectrum of ideologies, uh, the Minnesota ALU, the Minnesota State Public Defenders, and uh, Americans for Prosperity Minnesota. Um, nationwide, this kind of legislation has been passed in other states with bipartisan support. Um, it's, it's actually uh, an initiative of the um, ALEC, um, the American Legislative, oh, I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but um, in any case, I just want to emphasize that this is something that will help prosecutors by providing additional information um, as they assess whether or not to use a jailhouse witness's testimony, as well as providing information for the defense that isn't already required by the rules of criminal procedure. I know you're pressed for time, so okay. I, I can take questions if anybody has any. Yep, and I will I will note uh, for members, we did get permission to go a couple minutes past 10 o'clock, um, so we do have time. Uh, Representative Navani. Thank you, Chair uh, Becker-Finn. Uh, just want to point out a couple things that you said. I, it, absolutely in favor of this bill, and it's a good case law that needs to be followed, but uh, this isn't a police issue. This is a prosecution and judges and defense attorneys coming to agreements issue. Um, so most of these cases, th this is already case procedures, just standardizing that. So I, I, I speak in favor of it, but let's keep focused what it is. It's, it's a system re re uh, revision or clarification. Thank you. Yep, uh, thank you, Representative Votney. Um, any other member questions? All right, uh, Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just real quickly, is there a fiscal note to this um, bill? Uh, Representative Long. Uh, thank you for the question, Representative Scott. I, I have not seen one come back yet. It, this was scheduled pretty quickly after it was introduced, so but it is being laid over. And so I, I suspect we'll have time to, um, to assess whether there is a fiscal cost. Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Chair. Would would House uh, fiscal analysts know the answer to that question? Uh, Mr. Walls. Uh, Madam Chair, Representative Scott, a fiscal note has been requested and some preliminary uh, costs have come in. Um, it appears that the Attorney General will be seeking some money um, to have a database that would keep this information, um, but the fiscal note is not yet finalized. Thank uh, you. Representative Scott. Thank you. All right, um, any uh, closing comments, Representative Long? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanna thank um, Ms. Jones for, for her testimony. And I think the you know one in five exonerations uh, for DNA evidence relating to this shows that this really can have a substantial impact for trying to make sure that justice is being served and innocent people aren't, aren't being wrongfully convicted. Uh, and I agree with Representative Navadi. This is a this is a systems issue, and I think there's just a smart reform to try to help um, help improve our system and get better justice. So thank you for the committee for hearing the bill. Yep, uh, thank you, Representative Long. And I will uh, note for this bill and all the others, there uh, there are some handouts information that was uh, emailed out to folks. Would encourage you to take a look at that um, for more information. And with that, there were no amendments filed, so we will lay over House File 992 for possible inclusion in the Judiciary Finance Omnibus Bill. 